I'm basing this list on my years of experience, where all of these have been needed on pretty much every project I've ever worked on. Well, maybe except one, but that's just a really useful skill to know. There's nothing worse than having excellent design and creative skills only to be let down by the smoothness of your easing, and I've seen it plenty of times. And to me, that's why the graph editor is probably one of the most important things you can ever learn as a motion designer. Now, I'm not just talking about applying basic easing here, or potentially just using a script to do the easing for you. And definitely don't leave your keyframes like this. I think every good motion designer really stands out by flexing their easing. Truly understanding the value graph, and admittedly sometimes the speed graph, even though many people don't like it, can take you a long way. Understanding them really allows you to finesse and smooth out your animations, and really keep that rhythm and momentum going throughout your projects. To me, this is vital to being a better motion designer, and it's probably one of the most transferable skills you can have between different software packages. Now, if I mention shape layers, you might be thinking, isn't that just for circles and squares? Well, hold on a minute. They're not just about creating simple shapes. They can actually do way more than that. Let me show you. Now let's start with trim paths. Think of them as your animation magic ones. You can use trim paths to give your layers that draw an effect, but you can also lay them up to create a series of dots traveling on a path, or lines and dots traveling on a path, which is way easier than doing this manually. Now when you're dealing with shape layers, you've also got something called repeaters. They're like your cloning machines. With repeaters, you can effortlessly multiply your shape and tweak their positions. And with clever animation and adding expressions to these, you can do some really cool stuff. Now my projects mainly only consist of shape layers nowadays, and that's because they're much easier and more flexible to work with. And there's two ways you can go about doing this. Now there is a plugin called Overlord, which is potentially one of the biggest time savers known to man, or the manual method. Now, this isn't a paid ad, but I'd highly recommend you save yourself all the hassle and buy Overlord. It's potentially the best plugin and one of the only plugins you really need for After Effects. Now, Overlord allows you to push your shape layers from Illustrator straight into After Effects, and it makes things much easier as you can even push through your gradients too. This is something After Effects can't actually handle natively when converting Illustrator layers to shape layers inside After Effects. Now, this leads me to the manual method. Now once you've split out all your layers in Illustrator and then saved it, you'll want to import this file as a composition and retain layer sizes. This means your layers will work on their bounding box and not your compositions. Once your layers are in your timeline, you'll then want to right click and choose create shapes from vector layers. Now as I previously mentioned, some things might work great and others might not. For example, text and gradients will not convert correctly. However, text works fine with Photoshop files. So it really is a mixed bag. But trust me, get Overlord, you won't regret it. Now in all my experience, I don't think there's ever been a project I've ever done without using one of these. Masks and mats are like the secret weapons of motion design, and they're really not as tricky as they might sound. They're the tools that let you decide what shows up, and exactly what doesn't. Masks are like your digital erasers. You can use them to cover up or reveal certain parts of a layer. Think of it as crossing out words on a piece of paper that you wouldn't want to be read. Or if you're used to Photoshop, just painting things out. Masks can be applied by selecting your layer and drawing a shape or path over the top. And you can then access your mask properties by pressing M on your keyboard or twirling down the layer menus. Here you can keyframe your parameters too. This means you can do a simple layer reveal by simply animating your mask's path. Mats, however, they're the big boys. They're like a magic stencil. You can use them to cover up or reveal certain parts of a layer, and it decides which parts of the layer below get to shine through. It's as though you're placing a stencil on top of your project, and it only lets you see through the bits that you want it to. Mats really are the trick to making complex looking transitions or effects. But here's the best part, they're much easier to use than they sound. So imagine we're making a cool Netflix documentary, and I only want this image of this cat to be inside the text, and it's super simple to do. All we need to do is hit this toggle switcher slash modes button, or you can press F4, and this will bring up your track mat options. Now what we need to do is select the layer that we want to show through, and then our mat will be the layer we want as the stencil. So in this case, I'm gonna select the cat layer, and under track mat, I'm gonna select cats. 
And now the video will be stenciled to the text outline. And you'll notice the text also turns off invisibility. Now you can use mats and have the visibility on for things like shape layers, but in this case, we need it off. So the video below will show through. You also have this button here to the right, which will invert the mat. So it will do the opposite. And instead of applying to only the stencil, it will apply to everything but the stencil. Now, if you click this button, it will switch to a Luma mat, which basically means using black and white values of an image. In this case, however, it's already a white image, so it's just using them anyway and nothing will change. When it comes to masks and mats, it's all about choosing the right one for your project. But the main thing is you have fun with them. Now, imagine your client has come to you and said, we really like this video of this man talking, but can we change the background? Now, you might be thinking, what is this process and how do I even do this? Well, let me introduce you to the painful world of rotoscoping. Now, rotoscoping has come a long way with the roto brush improvements and now AI. But while sometimes it might work great, others it can be absolutely terrible. And this is where manual rotoscoping will be needed. This is the process of using the pen tool to create masks and manually moving the points of these masks to manually track your subject in order to cut them out. Now it is a painstaking process and I've certainly done my fair share of it, but I think it's vital that you learn how to mix automated rotoscoping with the manual one to really refine your images. At the end of the day, it's always the extra 10% that really makes the difference. And you want to be doing work that you're really happy with and that your client is happy with as well, especially if you want to get rebooked. Now let's talk about code. And I get it. As a motion designer, code might absolutely terrify you, as it did once me. But let me tell you a little secret. I've unintentionally taught myself code through the persistence of using it. Now in After Effects, we use something called expressions, which is based on JavaScript. But even learning some basic one-liners can simplify your projects tremendously. I honestly wish I'd embraced expressions a lot sooner in my career, as they really are the ultimate time savers. Now you really don't need to be a coding wizard, and a basic understanding can get you a long way. Expressions can really save you from building super complex rigs, or doing manual tedious keyframes that really don't need to be done. So instead of fretting about the use of code and expressions, embrace it and make it part of your journey to make the process a whole lot smoother. However, don't worry if you have no understanding of code or expressions. It really can seem daunting, but it doesn't need to be. And to help you get started, I'd recommend watching this video next.